Chapter 9 You only have to look at your children's drawings or listen to the odd little phrases they coin to know that man is born with a creative urge. Yet sadly, most people lose this urge as they grow older. Many primitive societies seem far wiser than us in the way they nurture this quality. But we civilized folk in pursuit of such worthy ends as direct marketing allow this inherent ability to atrophy. We have come to think only a special, gifted few can be creative, you have to be a specialist. Yet, who has not used the phrase, I've just had an idea? The question is, was it a good idea or a bad one? Those who don't do it for a living tend to imagine having good ideas is a matter of flair, of letting the mind wander where it will. This is a myth. Your imagination flourishes best when guided. You are more likely to have good ideas if you go about it in the right way. Technique for getting ideas 1. Master your subject. It is from the truth that you will create good work. Your imagination can never dream up anything to beat the truth. This process of learning is vital. It will determine your positioning. Think about your prospects. Read any market research there is available. Speculate about those wishing to visit the country. What kind of people are they? Why would they wish to go there? Make lots of notes. What would you like about going there? What would disappoint you? Talk to your colleagues and ask their views. Jot down any ideas you may have, no matter how odd. 2. The inner game you must have heard people say, I have no idea where that idea came from. It just came. Well, a lot of what we achieve comes from the subconscious. Indeed, in a totally different field, Many top sporting coaches have come to believe that if you just let your brain and body run on autopilot and stop concentrating consciously, you will do better. Whatever the truth, it seems that in getting ideas the same principles apply. At a certain point you must let your subconscious take over. Once you have stored up all the facts about your problem in your brain and talked to other people about it and written down any ideas that occur to you, just relax. Move on to another job. Don't struggle, just forget that particular problem. 3. Use sounding boards One of the principal benefits of working with others is that you can talk to them about your ideas. When you have an idea or some alternatives, discuss them with your colleagues, your secretary or always a good idea, potential customers. They will always see the benefits or drawbacks more clearly than you. Many people are most unwilling to do this. We identify strongly with our ideas. They are our creatures. It is hard to expose them to the bitter wind of criticism. However, you are not creating for yourself, but for others. Getting organized There are a number of formulae you can follow if you want to ensure that your work follows a logical sequence. Here are the component parts of a good sales letter. The opening, which should attract the reader's attention and induce him to read. The description and explanation should hold his interest by causing him to picture the proposition in his mind. The argument should create the desire for the article offered for sale. Persuasion should bring the reader around to your way of thinking by seeing how the article is adapted to his needs. This is followed by Inducement which gives him an extra reason for buying, and in conclusion you have the climax, which makes it easy for the reader to order, and assures that action by causing him to act at once. This formula is variously known as IDA or AIDCA. If you want to remember AIDCA it, then recall the name of the opera by Verdi. AIDCA stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, Conviction, Action. It stands to reason that in order to give people your message, you must first attract attention. Having attracted attention, you must interest people in what you have to say. But this is useless if they do not desire what you are offering. And even if they desire it, they must be convinced what you say is true. 
How to build conviction Writing copy to sell direct is the literary equivalent of having the kind of face that nobody trusts. First of all, readers know you're trying to sell them something. Secondly, because you are not selling face-to-face, -face, people are often even more suspicious. So this section is very important. It's an area, too, much neglected by lazy writers. Here are some ways to make your copy more convincing. 1. Make sure the tone is appropriate and don't overstate. 2. Be specific. 3. If the product is at all technical, give the specifications. 4. If it is a compilation, like a record album or anthology, give every title. 5. Write in the present tense as far as possible the words will and can and could imply less certainty of benefit than the word is. As soon as you can after opening the copy, you must move into the present tense. Thus, you say, this product does this, you feel this, not it will do, or you will feel. 6. Make it sound easy. Don't talk about the buyer having to do anything, talk about the product doing it for them. Thus, you do not learn to type, our course has you typing. And, being specific. Catalogs, the visual reigns. Catalogs, being entirely visual, are apparently the medium with least in common with the telephone but they have a similarity when it comes to the creative approach. That is, you don't have to worry about getting attention. Usually they have either been requested or they are received with pleasure. The challenge, therefore, just as with the phone, is to exploit that attention to keep people interested. In one other respect, catalogs differ from most other media apart from posters. The pictures are more important than the words. However, every word must count. Trying to describe the product in the minimum number of words, every one of which must justify its place, is splendid training. It takes exceptional professionalism to do it well. Few can. It also takes exceptional professionalism to log approach. Often because catalogs are thrown together as cheaply as possible, the result is what you would expect, rubbish. But paying a little more, and spending more time thinking about how you can differentiate yourself is of exceptional importance. It really will pay off for you. 15 Suggestions for Improving Your Catalog 1. Find a way to make your catalog different. 2. Catalogs should not be impersonal. 3. Position is vital. 4. The cover is your prime selling spot. 5. Space is at a premium in a catalog. 6. Don't underestimate the number of items you can get on a page. 7. Create changes of pace and interest. 8. Every catalog entry should be a miniad with its own headline. 9. Use the same style for your catalog as you would use for other communications. 10. Photographs usually, but not always, do better than illustrations. 11. Pay great attention to the order form and how it is planned. 12. Reminding people how to order frequently throughout the catalog pace. Taken to ensure that the captions and prices are easily related to items. 14. Catalog results can be boosted enormously, sometimes over 50% by the use of contests and sweepstakes. 15. For reasons of finance and logistics, it usually pays to use as few photographers or illustrators as possible. Broadcast Media What you can do in broadcast media is affected clearly by the very limited time those media allow. That time is itself governed by another factor, you have to allow a sufficient period within the commercial to give details of how to respond. Television is watched with a fair degree of attention by its audience. This is one of the reasons for its power. You don't have to do anything particularly startling to attract attention. The challenge is, having opened the commercial, to build people's interest. Here are three basic things to remember about TV or radio, bearing in mind that radio is TV without pictures. Here, 
Once again, you're trying to create pictures inside people's minds. 1. First, you must seek a single, simple, central idea. People can rarely take on board more than one simple idea. You may buttress it with supporting facts, but don't try to introduce any conflicting thoughts. 2. Never forget that TV is a demonstration medium. In the case of radio, demonstration is perhaps best used when selling record collections, which are clearly made for the medium. 3. The third thing to remember is that if you are going to be entertaining, that entertainment should be derived from the cell. It should not be inappropriate. Here are some of the points likely to make your broadcasting work more effectively. Are you really exploiting the medium? For instance, if you're on TV, is it truly visual, or just words set to pictures? If you're on radio, is it just words or are you using the medium properly to conjure up images in people's minds? Is there a key visual or sound which acts as a mnemonic device to fix in the memory? Is the product the hero, or is the execution? If there's music, is it relevant or just gloss? The same applies to any visual device. Everything should be essential to making the commercial work better. Do you get straight to the point? You have limited time, get people involved instantly. In particular, a dramatic opening at the beginning of radio commercials to set them aside from the tapestry of sound, a loud noise, a fanfare, are obvious things. A challenging statement is another, or some tricky form of delivery like somebody speaking very fast. Does the product or service solve a problem? If so, is it shown clearly? Have you made it clear this is a direct offer? Preferably at the beginning, so people know they have to take note of somewhere to reply to. How to make your creative work virtually foolproof? Work be done before you actually start writing or drawing, it is also at this point that most things could go wrong. 1. What is the background? 2. What is the objective? 3. How much can you afford? 4. When is it wanted? 5. Are you clear on the positioning? 6. Who are you selling to? 7. What is it? And what does it do? 8. What need in your prospect does your product or service fulfill? 9. What makes it so special? 10. What benefits are you offering? 11. What do you consider the most important benefit to be? If you can find one that is unique, that would be ideal, since you would have no competition. Often what you are looking for is a single benefit or a combination of benefits which you consider to be appealing. 12. Is there a free trial, easy terms, pay no interest or less interest, free gift for ordering, free gift whether you keep product or not, sweepstakes entry, no deposit, nominal deposit, temporary price offer, buy now, pay in a few months, for example pay for your Christmas gifts in January, sale, two for one, and variations of this. End of stock close out. Mystery gift. More than one gift. Discount or gift for quantity. Discount or gift for buying in a certain period. Double your money back guarantee. You must always check on the nature of the guarantee for a product or service. We'll buy back from you after a certain period. Sometimes you... 13. If you cannot make a good offer, can you say something of exceptional interest or threaten a penalty? Here are some examples. New improved product. News item related to your product. Prices are about to rise. By now. An extremely powerful motivator. We don't know how long we can hold this offer open, prices may rise. Lots of powerful testimonials. We're repeating this offer because it was such a smash hit last time. We only have a certain number in stock. Specially imported from somewhere else where it was a great success. All the offers, or non-offers, mentioned in the last two points, 
are particularly relevant when planning follow-up mailings to inquirers or past customers. This is important to remember. There is more potential and customer files than most firms imagine. 14. What lists, media or database selection will be used? Have they been used in the past and if so what happened? Is there any particular group of people who seem exceptionally responsive or unresponsive? This will usually give you a clue to the motivations of those you are communicating with and help you find new appeals for special groups. 15. What tests are you conducting? 16. Put the product or service to the test. 17. Examples of previous promotions, those that did well and those that didn't. 18. What about competitive material? 19. Proofs and testimonials. 20. What about complaints? The same thing applies when selling something. Find out what people don't like, then you will know what object. Obviously some objections are from cranks and must be ignored. But very often, you will gain useful knowledge. 21. Any physical restrictions? 22. What are the terms of the guarantee? 23. How do people pay or reply? 24. What style guidelines are there? 25. Si Planning your creative treatment. Whether you are a team or a lonely individual, here is a list of points to refer to as you work towards a good creative treatment. 1. Your safest opening, though not necessarily your best, is your prime benefit and offer. 2. Tricky, clever openings rarely work. 3. Seek a dramatic central idea, preferably one that works in words and pictures. If you can have an idea which is both visual and written, perfect. And if that word picture combination demonstrates, as the stopwatch did, even better. Finding a strong idea is vital. That's why you shouldn't just settle for the first one you come across. If you only examine one idea, it's a little like buying one lottery ticket, when for very little more you could get 10 and multiply your chances. Seek plenty of alternatives. 4. Is it the right length? One thing to remember is the impact of the brand name. If it is famous, you will require less persuasive copy than if it is unheard of. 5. Can you give a test drive? 6. If your name is well known, feature it strongly. 7. In mailings, give great thought to the envelope. 8. The letter is the key element in direct mail, the most personal part of the communication. The letter comments, amplifies, makes more human, sells, the facts in the other material. You can get the best of both worlds by illustrating your letter, but make sure it's still in the letter convention by using a typewritten script. 13. Attention grabbers. Just as there are proven rules which make replying easier, there are many facts known about what tends to attract attention. Here are 1. Busy layouts often seem to pull better than neat ones. 2. Vary shapes, sizes and colors. Vary your colors, vary your shapes, vary your sizes in individual communications and sequences. Experiment 3. Of all illustrative techniques, the cartoon attracts most attention. 4. One large picture attracts more attention than lots of small ones. 5. 5. A picture of somebody staring out of the page at you attracts attention. 6. Color will attract attention. 7. Putting something odd into a picture will attract attention. 8. Too many extraneous props divert attention. 9. Extreme close-ups of a product attract attention. 10. Be careful where you put your headline. 11. Use tables and graphs when. 12. It pays to use layout styles that make coupons look valuable. 13. But will they believe what they see? Point 12 is an instance where a visual signal makes your message more convincing. Often, even if people are attracted by what they see, and assuming they find it easy to take in, they still may not believe what you have to say. 
Effective art direction can do much to add conviction. Photographs are more convincing than drawn illustrations. This is hardly surprising when you think about it, yet frequently people use illustrative techniques for no reason other than personal preference. Short of sending people a sample, nothing can be more convincing than photography. Before and after, pictures are very persuasive. Seek opportunities to use them. People believe what they want to believe, and a before and after is a Positive reward pictures tend to work better than negative problem pictures. This is not surprising when you consider that people like rewards more than threats. A classic instance of this is insurance advertising, telling people about the dreadful things that will happen to their family if they die is not as effective as displaying the large sum of money which will be their family's reward. Don't use illustrations that do nothing. That may sound a strange thing to say, but if you look through many advertisements the product is merely shown when, with a little effort, it could have been demonstrated. A consistent visual tone is vital. Positioning must be respected in everything you do, everything you say is, and that includes the look of the things you do. Otherwise, people get confused and you start to lose conviction. Break down the product or service visually, else of the way it is finished, or put in panels which show different aspects of a service or product. Showing the faces of people who give testimonials, and reproducing those testimonials in facsimile adds credibility. You should also put in their signatures if possible, and, if their statements are used in headings, put quote marks around them. This increases response. Don't use pictures just for the sake of it.